வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ அண்ட் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஸ்டார்ட் அட் லுக்கிங் அட் விஸ்கோ எலாஸ்டிசிட்டி இன் த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோ அண்ட் வி வில் கண்டினியூ அவர் டிஸ்கஷன் ஆஃப் விஸ்கோ எலாஸ்டிசிட்டி இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வாட் இஸ் விஸ்கோ எலாஸ்டிசிட்டி வி மென்ஷன் திஸ் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் தட் எக்ஸிபிட் ஆர் ஷோ ஆர் மேனிஃபெஸ்ட் both viscous and elastic behavior are called viscoelastic materials most biological materials or almost all the biological materials of interest to us exhibit viscoelastic behavior that means that there will be a change in behavior as a function of time and as a function of applied strain and there will be strain rate effects there will be time dependent deviation in elastic behavior that is depending on time there is a change in behavior okay so in the previous class we looked at ideal spring ideal dash pot we looked at what is a creep function and what is a stress relaxation function and how does creep and stress relaxation function look like for an ideal spring and an ideal dash pot and we also predicted we also guessed that uh, that in a viscoelastic material this is how it may look like but we don't have a model for that and we also said there is another manifestation of uh, viscoelasticity which we call as hysteresis in this class we will be looking at mechanical models of viscoelasticity one model we will start with in this class that is called as maxwell model and we will plot creep function and stress relaxation function for maxwell model okay what is maxwell model a maxwell body or a maxwell uh, material or maxwell model of a material is a spring and a dash pot in series with each other okay in series there is a dash pot and a spring now what this means is before getting into the analysis and derivation what this means is that if i apply a force at the two ends of this material of this uh, body the force will be felt equally by both the dash pot and the spring okay but the deformations will not be the same the deformations in the spring for example is dependent on the force applied right but the deformation in the dash part is not directly related to the force right because it is dependent on velocity in a dash part remember for a spring f is equal to kx and for a dash part f is equal to cx dot and their properties the property of a spring and dash pot are defined by their corresponding constants right for a spring it is k for a dash pot it is c it is a damping constant c for the dash pot but you are applying only the same force and the same force is felt by both these but the deformation is not expected to be the same and it will not be the same right x is different right x is different for spring and uh, dash pot and it is x dot that is dependent or that is going to change based on force something to keep in mind as we proceed with the analysis okay let's write it down so we remember f is felt equally by both by spring and dash pot will x be same that is the question remember this is having both the spring and a dash pot in series x is not expected to be the same likely no or almost always no is it not likely no why is that because you know f is for a spring f is kx and for dash pot 
f is c x dot is it not so we are not expecting x to be the same right i can write this down for the dash part for the dash part right f is i am going to call the force uh, applied or felt at the dash part as f1 which is f actually but for convenience i am going to call this uh, f1 because the deformations i am going to call as x1 and x2 right the total deformation xt the total deformation is a function of the deformation felt at the dash part and the deformation felt at the spring right but first let's deal with the forces f is c x dot but uh, what x is this this is this x or x1 it not because it's not the entire x it's not the total deformation it's the deformation felt at the dash part alone right so this is c x dot that is correct but it's not c x total dot but rather c x1 dot are expanding c dx1 by dt okay another notation now oh, okay we here we are seeing x1 t okay here also i'll say x1 t what about spring for the spring i'm going to call that force as some f2 but then f2 is also f is it not because the force is felt equally by both f2 is f and that is k x but in this case that is x2 is it not k x2 t and what is that remember for a spring that deformation is change from its equilibrium or resting length is it not let me write that down okay let me write this as k x2 and what that is is k times the current deformation minus the equilibrium position or the resting length right i'm going to call this as equation 1 and this as equation 2 now what is the total length well the total length is uh, the total length xt is the length at the dash part which is x1t plus the length at the spring which is x2t is it not now i can differentiate this you will soon realize why i am differentiating it so hang on so dxt by dt is d x1 t by d t plus d x2 t by d t okay so i'm differentiating throughout with respect to time a question is does uh, equilibrium length change with time in other words x2 e does it change with time well this is an ideal spring its equilibrium length is something is a constant for that spring its resting length its equilibrium length is something is a constant for that ideal spring so dx2e by dt is zero in other words let me write this down equilibrium length for clarity i am writing this down equilibrium length of the ideal spring or the spring in general does not change with time that is d x2 e by dt is zero that is how i'm getting it okay so d x by dt is d x1 by dt plus d x2 t 
okay for clarity that is fixed 2 t by d t. Now, let us also for clarity let me rewrite equation 1 and equation 2 in this slide. What is equation 1? Equation 1 is f 1 is c d x 1 by d t. Equation 1 is f 1 is equal to f is c d x 1 t by d t. Okay. And the force felt by the spring f 2 is which is f that is k x 2 t. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Now, I can write d x 1 t by d t as f by c from equation 1 I can write d x 1 t by d t as f by c and what is d x 2 to d x 2 by d t that is d f 2 by d t times k is it not because if I have to differentiate equation 2 ok what is equation 2 that is f 2 is or f f 2 is f f is k x 2 t now if I differentiate on both sides I get d f by d t is k times d x 2 t by d t this is what I am getting let me let me rewrite this as d x 2 t by d t is 1 by k times d f by d t. So, this is 1 by k times d f by d t. Now, I have expressions for d x 1 by d t and d x 2 by d t. Now, I can substitute them. Okay. So, I get d x by d t as f by c plus d f by d t the whole thing divided by k 1 by k times d f by d t is d f by d t divided by k. Now, what is this? This is the equation relating this is the equation relating force and defamation for a Maxwell body. Okay. Okay, because there is both the effect of the spring and the dash part in this case. Okay. This is the equation that relates both force and defamation for a Maxwell body. Now, if I want to test creep, what would I do? I am applying a force of a known force F naught at time t equal to 0 and I am checking what happens in the spring and the dash part. Well, the first thing is that because the application of force is sudden and abrupt, right? At time t equal to 0, there will be no defamation in the dash part. In the dash part, there will be no defamation because it is that force is C x dot, is it not? Yeah. But the spring will immediately respond. The spring will immediately respond and that defamation is F naught by k. That defamation that will be felt is F naught by k. So, at time t equal to 0, at time t equal to 0, the force that is felt is related to the displacement as x of 0 is f of 0 by k. And this is the initial condition for both creep and stress relaxation. This is the initial condition. Okay. So, that is f of t equal to 0, the x is f naught by k. Okay. Why is this? Because the dash part cannot immediately respond. Okay. At time t equal to 0, there is no displacement in the dash part. That does not mean that there is no displacement ever in the dash part. At time t equal to 0, there is no immediate response. 
Now, how do you model a sudden application of a force? Well, you model this as a step function. Okay. So, you call you use this mathematical function heaviside step function. So, the application of a constant force is f of t is f naught times theta of t, where theta of t is the heaviside step function given by this which is 0 for time t less than 0 and at uh, time t equal to 0, at time t equal to 0 it is 0 0.5 and time t greater than 0 it is suddenly 1. Okay. Just at time t equal to 0, it is 0 0.5. This is the heavy side step function. What is the time derivative of uh, this heavy side step function that is d theta by dt? That is the direct delta function delta of t. What is this? This is at time t equal to 0, at time t equal to 0, this is 1 or very large value and everywhere else it is 0. Well, this is actually not a physically realizable function, but we are discussing theory here. So, theoretically at exactly time t equal to 0, d theta by dt is very high and at all other values d theta by dt is 0. Okay. This is the direct delta function delta of t. What is the value or how to model this uh, direct delta function? Well, uh, if I take a really small time window capital T, when the time is less than half of capital T, right? or in other words, if uh, delta of t is equal to minus this is, uh, is equal to 0 for when small t is less than minus capital T by 2 and is 1 by capital T for t between or small t between minus capital T by 2 and plus capital T by 2 and is again 0 for small t greater than capital T by 2. Okay. That is what is written, I am just rewriting it for clarity. Okay. Now, if I want to test stress relaxation, I apply a sudden defamation x naught at time t equal to 0. When I suddenly apply a defamation at time t equal to 0, there is no immediate change in the force that is felt. Right. So, f 1 of t is 0. The sudden application of uh, the constant deformation can be represented as x naught times the heavy side step function theta of t. Okay. Now, what will be the response of the Maxwell body to the applied force f? That will be f naught, there will be some force f naught times theta of t. Suppose I am applying a force f of t, which is f naught times the heavy side step function theta of t, it will be x is f naught times 1 by k plus t by c, is it not? It will be f naught times 1 by k plus t by c times theta of t, right. Now, suppose I apply a defamation x of t, which is x of t is x naught theta of t is k times x naught times e power minus k by c times t, the whole thing multiplied by theta of t, okay. That. Now, let me try to discuss this. So, what would be the creep function? Well, 
I am applying uh, a force, I am applying a force and I am measuring the deformation. Well, there is an immediate spring like response, right? That is, uh, you know, the deformation increases and then the deformation continues to increase in time. Why is that? Because initially the spring is recruited and then slowly the effect of the dash part comes into the picture. So, slowly there is an increase in deformation with time, with passage of time, okay. That is, it creeps linearly in time because of the dash part. This is due to the spring and this is due to the dash part. And then I am removing the uh, stress or the force that is up applied and then there is immediate response to the spring value and then it remains a constant. Okay. When the force is removed, the deformation immediately decreases to the spring component and then there is no more creep, the creep disappears right, due to the dash part. So, this is you know a simple linear combination of individual responses of the two elements. So, there is uh, there are two elements spring and dash part what is happening is a simple linear response. So, the creep response is a combination of or a linear combination of the two individual responses of the individual components. Okay. But suppose I apply deformation right what happens is there is an immediate response due to the spring or there is an immediate development of force due to the spring, there is an immediate force response due to the presence of the spring, but then this response decreases in time, right, decreases with time in an exponential manner as in e power minus t by tau, where tau is c by k, okay. This is due to dash part and this is due to the spring, okay. In this case, you cannot say that this response is a mere linear combination of the two individual responses. No, actually, e power minus t by tau is not linear by definition an exponential function is not linear and also that tau itself is a function of both the spring constant and the damping constant tau is c by k it is dependent on both the spring and the dash part. So, it is not merely a linear combination of the spring and dash part individual responses. So, what we have seen we saw one model of viscoelasticity which is the Maxwell model and we saw how the Maxwell model is modeling or is predicting the response to stress or st strain and we saw how creep function is a mere linear combination of individual responses of the two elements, but the stress relaxation function is not a mere linear combination, but rather an exponential function that decays as in tau, which is a function of both the spring constant and the damping constant C. With this, we come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.